Hi, so today I want to talk about our future and our potential future technologies to the limits, uh, to the very extreme of what the human mind can imagine about our future and naturally all everything in this video is completely hypothetical uh, but the technologies that we are talking about first of all absolutely possible given the laws of physics and given what we know about computation uh, and the limits uh, the possibilities of technology the physical systems that we can build and second of all uh, absolutely no reason to think that we couldn't have these technologies if we just keep going. The only idea or premise that we need to accept for these technologies in the future is that we keep making progress. Doesn't matter how slow, how little the progress is, unless we all die and our civilization is wiped out, we will reach a point of having these technologies. So one major breakthrough will be artificial general intelligence. Once we have AGI, artificial general intelligence, it will forever change the human condition. What it means to be a human being on this planet will change just fundamentally. And I was talking about the given that as long as our technology keeps advancing at least somewhat, then we get to these technologies. But an important thing to notice is that our technology is advancing exponentially. If we look at the creation of the human species, well, creation, uh, development, uh, the separation from other great apes to, to us, uh, about 100,000 years ago, then 10,000 years ago, the agricultural revolution, few thousand years ago, the bigger emergence of cities, few hundred years ago, the industrial revolution, then somewhere in the 1940s, the beginning of the information age, for the first time in human history, we could offload some of our cognitive capacities onto machines. Then just a few decades later, and just about 30 years ago, uh, it was the widespread adoption of the internet, uh, the second part of the information age. And now we are getting to the fourth industrial revolution, and that is artificial intelligence and automation. And if you notice what I said about approximately 100,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, few thousand years ago, few hundred years ago, just few decades, that is exponential growth. Every next advance happens exponentially quicker than the one that came before because every new technology we develop helps us develop new technology even faster. So just to sort of try and give this idea that uh, we definitely are heading in that direction that unless something goes terribly wrong, we will reach these technologies. So what technologies we are talking about? Artificial general intelligence, of course. If you have a human level intellect, a machine that can think in the level of a human being, being general, so we are able to complete many different tasks and we can think and we can plan ahead and we have a picture of the world in our head. We are great at simulating the future and recalling the past and predicting what might happen in the future. An artificial general intelligence would have the same capacities. But let's think, once we have this human level intelligence, it would already be superhuman in many other tasks, such as memory, pretty much never making mistakes, being amazing at calculation and communication. We, it might have many different bodies across the entire world. All of the cameras on the planet could be its eyes and all of the microphones on the planet could be its ears, just to give some idea. And then the idea is something called recursive self-improvement. And that means if you have such an intelligence, it can look at itself, its hardware, its software. And if it's intelligent enough, then it can design better hardware and software. Then it's smarter, and then it's even better at making itself even smarter. And again, this loop goes until it might reach a point of being absolutely superhuman level, superhuman level of intelligence, smarter than any being on the planet. And I have said this before, I believe intelligence is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. So what a super intelligence could do uh, would be cosmic in scale. So this is really important that this super intelligence would be aligned with human values. This is the value alignment problem of if you have such an intelligence, if, if you truly get it in your head and understand the concept of what it would mean, it's creepy. It's quite creepy. Having a being that might be completely alien, but just as smart as you in the beginning, and then an alien creature that is 10 times, 100 times, thousands of times more intelligent than you. Anything that you imagine or think or try to trick it or, or, or put it in a cage somewhere or limit its abilities will be just laughable. 
nothing. Uh, so if you truly, you know, stop and think what it would mean to have such an intelligence being on the planet, uh, it's it's uh, are inspiring, and and I believe once we create such an intelligence, uh, it will humble us all to see something like that. I just got kind of chills for a moment uh, imagining it. So why I spent so much time talking about super intelligence is that once we have super intelligence, that will enable all other technologies that we dream about. Building a Dyson sphere around the sun to gather energy, not even talking about harnessing all the energy on our planet from volcanoes and wind and solar. It can solve nuclear fusion. It can solve all of our energy problems. It can solve all of our food problems. It can solve all of our medical problems. It can cure any illness and any disease known to humankind. So if it's aligned with human values, then it will completely transform what it means to be a human. And if we get to live to see that, then we will look at this time right now as just being babies, fetuses really, being in the stone age, being practically blind. So AGI for sure will be one of the enabling technologies for everything else. Having better quantum computers, having better classical computers, creating life itself, creating life instead of DNA, RNA, having some completely different synthetic genetic code platform, having actually immersive virtual reality that you would actually feel that you can be in another world, like in the matrix. You can create a completely realistic world with whatever you possibly can dream and imagine. Then of course, this artificial intelligence would enable to build nano machinery, nanobots that can go into a bloodstream and fix every part of your body cell by cell, making you stronger, faster, and also go into your brain. First of all, of course, heal all your neurons and first of all, healing all of your body. But the second part would be transforming your body to any extent that you wish. Maybe you just want to be healed or maybe you want to have superhuman abilities uh, being healed with this nano machinery. Of course, there's different ways to do it. You can just develop uh, some extremely advanced biotics so you can have some machinery, some hand, for example, that is just like 10 times faster and stronger and, and feels has better touch than any human hand can have to the point where you have these body parts that are just better in every way than a human body part that you think yeah, I should probably get that. The way you bought the new TV or the or the way you want the new cell phone. Undoubtedly, there will be people who are not wanting to go along with this, who prefer their original biologic, biological bodies. And absolutely, like this will be a time post-scarcity. No longer will there be such thing as money when you have nano factories, microscopic machines that can create anything you want. You can have this box, this 3D printer type thing. You can put dirt and rocks in it and out comes food for you or anything else that you can possibly want. Money will no longer exist and greed will no longer exist. It will be such absurd concepts. We will look back, no doubt, with pity at people today having to work and having to do jobs that they are not passionate about. I think about this often, obviously. Uh, immense waste of human potential. Just such a waste of human life. But by wasting people's talents and abilities, what they could do. Of course, after AGI, no human will ever be useful again because this artificial intelligence can do anything better than any human being can do. Unless, of course, we merge with artificial intelligence. This is the beginning of what we see with Neuralink. You can have some kind of implant, also possibly that these nanobots go into your brain and build some kind of microscopic thing in there. And that allows you to com communicate in real time with artificial intelligence. So you can actually merge and become one with an artificial intelligence system. And that would be unimaginable. But that would be the only way that we could be meaningful or keep up uh, with the new world would be to merge with this artificial intelligence system. That would give us only hope of understanding the world better. And this is the interesting thing. We are limited today 
by our imagination, the same way I talked about having a prosthetic hand, that would be way better than anything you could imagine. Well, the best that people can imagine today is just some hunk of metal that, you know, looks kind of corny or, or funny and people not really into that. Like, we're just so limited by our imagination that we can't imagine, but there will become a point where these things will be obvious to us. Putting nanobots into our bodies emerging with artificial intelligence will be obvious. You can just see the vast extension of, of what human experience can be like. This is called post-human, after humanity, after this current stage of humanity, post-human, after we merge with artificial intelligence. And we occupy some space of consciousness. Post-human being, if we merge with artificial intelligence, would be much, much more expanded uh, consciousness. Uh, of course, space travel, we can go into space and do pretty much everything we want there. But this is an interesting point. Once we reach such a level of technology, these virtual worlds that we create, these simulations, might be so good and so realistic. You can get anything you want out of them. You can explore space in them as well without speed of light uh, being any kind of obstacle. Today, you go to the nearest star, even at the fastest possible speed that we know with the laws of physics allowing, would be four light years. So it takes you four years at the fastest possible speed to get to the closest star. And I, I think I, I make the assumption that we would think that would be a waste of time. Of course, this would be a time where resources would be basically unlimited. We could go definitely expand into, into the solar system. And if we have so much to go around, we might be like, hmm, like let's send stuff out into space. But probably there would be artificial intelligence systems or mind uploaded humans. Now, I have an issue with mind uploading that many people don't know. This, this is the issue of copying versus moving. So many people have this funny idea that this sci-fi notion from Star Trek of mind uploading kind of and it would be that you are in the future and you are sitting in a chair and there's a computer next to you and you have a mind upload. Every single atom in your head is scanned and put into the computer. And these people think that this process, after it's done, that magically consciousness, your first person experience, somehow jumps into the computer. Uh, they don't understand that it's a copy being made. It's not your soul sucked into the computer, your consciousness jumping into the computer. It's like, it's like literally a copy. So, you know, you're copied into the computer, you're killed off, and the copy in the computer, of course, will say, oh my God, this process worked, I'm alive, blah, blah, blah. But of course, it will just be a copy. You are dead. You do not continue living because you're just a copy. So there are many ideas of maybe slowly replacing your brain neurons uh, with artificial neurons. Maybe that's a thing. But maybe by that process, you gradually lose consciousness. Uh, like we never know with these things. I'm sure once we're super intelligent, we can figure that out. That will not be a problem. So I would posit that we might seem that like most of our activity and most of what we do will remain on planet Earth or well hovering in a solar system since there is so much experience to be had. After all, what do we live for? We live for experiences. We live for feeling things. Even the feeling of like actually accomplishing something in the physical world, you can have in the simulation whatever you imagine. Any argument that you can make to stay in the outside space is like, I actually want to go into the real physical world, whatever that means, the real physical world, what is reality, I'm sure we'll know, but we have no idea right now what the true nature of reality is. Any argument you can make that I want to stay outside can be crushed uh, by the reality of what it would mean uh, to be in the simulation that can accommodate every possible need and want that you have. Truly, our imaginations uh, just can't do it justice in any way. But once the time comes and we can clearly see uh, what the effects and how it would look like, then I think it would be no question that we would want to go into these worlds. 
Okay, so these are just some of my thoughts about future technology, mostly about artificial intelligence and some ideas about, yeah, what kind of technologies we will have. And mostly I do think it's very likely that these technologies will be enabled by artificial general intelligence, artificial super intelligence. Of course, we can reach them the regular route of just improving exponentially as we keep going right now. But I think before we reach any kind of limit of technology, we will first create artificial intelligence and that will create all the other technologies after that for us. So uh, I hope this was interesting in some way. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care.